this money that we make Can you imagine being in love with someone for years, but over time things start to slip? Every time you see that special person, you're all enthusiastic, but then they end up just hurting you in the end every time. But despite all this, you still see the old version of them. You remember them for who they were the day they met you. And thus, you keep coming back and trying to make things right over and over again to no avail. Okay, so that's what Residence Massacre Night 2 felt like. So Residence Massacre Night 2 finally released after like a six month wait. As you may or may not know, I've actually had a somewhat admirable respect for Residence Massacre on my channel. When it first came out, I applauded it for stepping up and taking advantage of an empty niche in the Roblox market. It came out at a time when the multiplayer horror aspects of FNAF were popular in Roblox, as well as the retro horror of Jim's computer. <gasps> Did we win? Bruh, I don't even understand what happened. I think a Doors entity might have attacked- And what did it do? It combined these two niches together to make the perfect storm of a Roblox horror game. Or so we thought. You see, Residence Massacre was the first of its kind, really. It was the inspiration behind Weird Strict Dad, as well as its respective clones as a ripple effect. When Weird Strict Dad first emerged as an imitation of Residence Massacre, that of which ended up being more successful, I and countless others felt a sort of sympathy for Residence Massacre. At first glance, it's hard not to. Residence Massacre came first, looked way better, and was outpaced by Weird Strict Dad, a game that was filled with microtransactions, manipulative gameplay, and overall looks like a cheap knockoff. But nowadays, Residence Massacre isn't the only game of its kind anymore. It has competition that itself played a hand in creating. And now, that it has the Weird Strict Dad multiverse to compete with, you start to notice that maybe its fate might have been warranted. I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games, and today, I'm talking about the fall of Residence Massacre. You thought I was funny? Oh yeah! So, I know a lot of people are reasonably frustrated with Weird Strict Dad's success over Residence Massacre. And believe me, there are things in Weird Strict Dad that are done terribly. Like, these people are selling all this stuff for Robux, but where is the money going? You should hire new people and fire the builder. Oh wait, the builder is the owner. That makes sense. But, with the release of Night 2, I believe a lot of people are truly going to realize the harsh truth of Residence Massacre. It's too hard. Weird Strict Dad, despite its horrible flaws, was a little more straightforward than its predecessor. It's easy for kids to understand, and the fact that all of the Weird Strict Dad fan games have basically the exact same mechanics makes translation almost seamless when going from one game to the next. In other words, iPad kids are young and impressionable. Weird Strict Dad gets implanted in their brains, then the idea of refueling the generator, drinking water, eating food, and hiding slash sleeping from dad becomes second nature in their brains. You know how I write all these videos? about 2012 to 2014 Roblox games almost purely from memory? Trust me, 10 years from now there's going to be someone making videos about Weird Strict Dad doing the exact same thing. In other words, Weird Strict Dad has been consistently easier for a child to understand as opposed to Residence Massacre. It sucks saying that, but it's true. The overall presentation of Weird Strict Dad is just more accessible as well. Don't get me wrong, the dad's design is unimaginative and lacking any sort of ambition at all, and the story is frustratingly dull, but it's still a story that connects the gameplay beats together. But Residence Massacre, I can't even tell what's happening. There's barely anything but a basic premise, and it's not even that really. The first night of Residence Massacre had only one sort of lore drop, and it was in the beginning, stating that a facility leaked toxic waste and it made Robloxians become terrifying, gored out monsters. That was basically all we got. Now it's seven months later, and Weird Strict Dead has dropped three chapters with an easy to understand story that basically ham fists it into your face with bare bones dialogue. Residence Massacre Night 2 seems to rely more on subtle storytelling, or rather, it wants to. There's a starting cutscene to Night 2, showing you clocking into your shift at the factory. Presumably, the factory that caused the outbreak, since there's cop cars on the front. Cop cars that are empty, but still blaring sirens, indicating that they were taken by the creatures during a confrontation. This is possibly why the main monster, I think his unofficial name is Larry, is seen visibly damaged compared to his previous incarnation. 
In other words, there was a police shootout, Larry got the clip unloaded into him, but he still caught two bodies nonetheless. Could a child have guessed this? I don't know. I mean, I dissected it because that's my job. But there's no visible bodies or blood splatter even outside of the map as an easter egg. Blood in Resonance Massacre is reserved for showing violence and terror. It's shown on the monsters where they're grotesque and filled with open wounds, the monster using his bloodied appendages as weapons. Blood also spawns as a big puddle when someone is, well, massacred as well as their corpse. But here, the cops are missing. There's no blood, no bodies, not even a gun or a badge. Did he eat them? Did they get munched? Could a kid get invested into this without a YouTube video to dissect it for them? After entering the building, you're met with a piece of paper that explains what to do. It also warns about a monster that manifests itself in ink, accompanying the fact that the page is covered in a bunch of black splooge. So far in the lore, we have 1. There's a radioactive outbreak that causes mutants to come out at night. 2. Your main character survives this encounter. 3. The next day you clock into your job at a facility, despite the fact that you learned about the radioactive waste causing monsters, and had a first-hand encounter with one yourself. Why are we going back? I don't know. It seems these cutscenes don't really build the story. All they do is connect gameplay. Like, thanks for showing us that we walked up to the gate of our job. Listen, I'm all for show-don't-tell gameplay and subtle storytelling, but where's the fucking story? You have competition, people. Come on, guys. As stated before, Resonance Massacre Night 2 is a really big step up in difficulty from the first night. The first night already had complaints of difficulty, with many people just resorting to glitching. Like, the wiki literally suggested glitching if you were playing solo. And glitch we did. Not intentional, though. Resonance Massacre didn't really take advantage of the difficulty, with no option to revive for Robux. I mean, come on, they could have had some good money. I bought the color-changing Game Pass, though. Gotta support the struggling devs, right, guys? Anyways, Residence Massacre Night 2 isn't nearly as accessible as its peers, with a difficulty that seems almost unfair at times. Like, can you imagine playing this game on mobile with no reliable communication? You're gonna get munched! In fact, I even tried playing with random people just for this video. And, um, yeah, only, only one wrench spawns, so if someone has the wrench and they don't use it, then, you know... It's all over. Bye bye. Even with other people, this game is still really difficult. We had a four stack and we kept getting munched. And here's why. Okay, so the premise of the game is that you have to keep the monster from breaching the windows via the floodlights. Using floodlights takes battery, which will result in you having to refuel the generator. A monster jumps out of the vents and immobilizes you in this hallway as well, resulting in a mild inconvenience if you don't avoid it properly. Okay, easy enough. We did that. During the night, monsters will also descend from the holes in the ceiling. You have to use a radio to scare them off. If they break, then you have to repair the radio tower outside. Okay, easy. Kind of. Not, not really! Okay, so here's where things went wrong. When you go outside to repair the radio tower, the monster will occasionally be there. This is a monster that will chase you down. It outspeeds you unless you're running, and you have very limited stamina. It can instantly kill you. And if it sees you go in a locker or through a door, it will pursue you. Let's play trivia. Can you guess where the monster spawns? A. It doesn't spawn outside, silly. B. In the back of the yard. C. By the radio tower. If you picked C, your expectations for this game are still too fucking high. It spawns right by the door. And this would be fine if it was a matter of, like, listening through the door to see if it's behind the door and then you have to go to the other one. No. 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 It spawns smack dab right in the middle of both of the doors and the monster doesn't even just roam around it knows where you are it only spawns if it's ready to hunt it's going straight for you see this is the crap i'm talking about it doesn't even roam it just locks to the next player the static warning on the screen when he's near does not help at all as he's already super close when this is happening. There's a severe lack of sound cues in this game and it's kind of stupid really. Reward your player for paying attention, yes? You can place locks on doors which delay its arrival and you'd think this would be good but it's not. It's almost useless. When I initially purchased the lock I was telling myself, Okay, Leon, even if the locks break, they're at least going to give us audio cues and buy us time to hide in a locker before he gets in. I was terribly wrong. He's on your door. He's on your door, get in, get in, get in, get in, He's trying to get in. Dude, he just in? broke in. Yeah. yeah, he jiggles it once and then he breaks in. Okay, I just put the second one, so now the monster will, I don't know, be mildly inconvenienced on its way in. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna hit it twice and it's gonna fucking break. All right, shift start. Open! Alright, I'm calling the radio. <laughs> oh, there are statics here. 
It broke a lot. Dude, that's it. It's getting it, bro. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> The lock buys you a mere one second, if not less, producing a noise when the lock breaks before he immediately opens the door. There's no jiggling noise to give you time to run, just a breaking noise to give you a 0.5 of a second's heads up. Didn't know the monster watched the lock picking lawyer. Okay, so the lock is useless. Got it. What else do we have? A camera? Okay, just like night one, they're useless in a game like this. Like we thought the flash would be helpful, but they're really not. Okay, what else? A cap can trap? I mean, a proximity alarm? The alarm doesn't notify you unless the monster is already inside. Only thing that's helpful is a UV light, which scares away the Slenderman slash Seek slash Eyes hybrid. It also has limited uses, because of course it does. And from the walkthroughs we watched, it seems a UV light is the only item people really use. They should make this game like Jim's computer, where you can order a gun off the internet and get the escaped ending. Do we win? Huh? We got the escape award. I don't even, I don't, I don't even know, know what happened. happened. I, I think, think a door. Oh yeah, at 2 a.m. Slenderman spawns and you can't look at him or you take damage. Also, he leaves seeks spluge puddles everywhere that slows you down if you walk over it. I think what's so frustrating about this game is that, put simply, we did what was asked of us and the monster still comes through the side door. <laughs> And Resonance Massacre is a long known to have shitty monster AI, that's why so many people try to glitch. I remember seeing numerous occasions while recording this video where people in the lobby were trying to gather people to help them glitch so that they could win. It's a little irritating that the game developers were able to put hot fixes to patch the glitches, but weren't able to ask themselves, why are people trying to glitch? Is our game too hard? I mean, even with the Iron Lung and Flashlight Game Pass, this game is still frustrating. It isn't a frantic struggle like it should be. It's like working at a real factory, the Sheen factory specifically. But alas, after spending two or three hours of our lives, as well as buying the Game Passes, we finally beat the game. Okay, so we glitched. Shout out to the dude who made this video with 12 views. Really pulled through for us. Oh my god, Bredian, such a skill issue. You can't judge the game if you haven't played it at all. Oh, I think I've played plenty. What am I missing out on? Doing the same loop of gameplay over and over again? Oh wait, I already did that. Hi. We just gotta jump. Oh, that's oh, way too Oh shit! I got kicked! <laughs> I got aired out, bro. <laughs> in all honesty, the point of this video isn't whether or not I beat the game. It's really trying to find out why most people in general no longer want to beat this game. Why is this game slipping despite dropping a new update? Why are we playing this? This game isn't even fun. It's not hard, it's just boring. And like I said before, it's just too hard too hard to get into and after all this time it sucks to say this but weird strict dad does it better it's far from a lack of yellow paint that's hurting this game maybe if they sold revives they could have hired important people with that money specifically quality assurance testers oh wait what the ending cutscene surely has to be good after all that right not really it's just you walk away from the facility after completing your shift the beta male that was too chicken shit to get up earlier gets up, opens the keycard door, and black splooge slender man seeks skibbity eye monster follows him. What the fuck did I just watch? This cutscene tells us nothing. This would be fine if it was maybe a post credit scene or something, but no. This is our main ending cutscene. This is the reward that people wanted for beating the game. This is supposed to get people invested for the next part of the story. This is a cutscene that's supposed to reward your most dedicated players with a story bit. Something to nibble on and speculate on and keep them waiting for chapter 3. The only thing I can guess from this is, the technician guy opened the secret key card door now that you left. He was waiting to do it in a secret. There's something secret behind that door. Then the black monster thing kills him. Oh wait, no, it, it, uh, the black monster thing is working with him, and that's why a previous didn't kill him because the lights of the factory turn on so maybe the black guy is pulling the strings and rizzing the technician into turning on the factory to make more toxic waste and infect the whole town this would be a good post credit scene for this night or even night one as a teaser for night two and then night two would show us what's behind this door this would be fine for planting story beats in the start but it's already night two and it's seven months into this game's life cycle it's a bit late to be doing the slow burn ambiguous imagery shit are we pulling a scott Cawthon and letting the fans write the lore for us just asking because I'll do it. Like, you can see what they were trying to do, but they're just not very good at it. And it pains me to say that because I have respect for this game and what it can do, since these developers are definitely far from the weird strict dad levels of lazy. There's potential in this game, but in order to keep this game going, you need fans. And this Night 2 update was your big moment to win your fans back, to get them invested and spark newfound interest. But in the end, it seems all you've created is apathy. I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games. Goodbye now.
Hey guys, we're currently one third of the way into 2024 and I decided to really start expanding the channel more and kind of start taking things in a new direction. Um, more on that later. But anyways, my friend decided to make this wiki. So if you want, it's not really done yet. But if you guys want to help edit any of the pages on here, please let me know. Currently, we don't really have a lot of editors except for like a couple people. And I kind of just go in and revise everything to make sure it's fine. But yeah, if you guys want to be an editor for the wiki, um, let me know. I'll give you guys shout outs. Just hit me a friend request on Discord. Also, shout out to Mr. Water Mayoni. Not only have you edited a little bit of on the wiki, but you have also bought this shirt over and over again. So thank you. Thank you to Danny as well for buying a crap ton of t-shirts. Um, thank you to all you guys for your contributions. If you guys want to help out with funding the creation of these videos, be sure to buy a couple of these shirts or you can help out in the wiki. So thank you so much. Once again, just wanted to give that quick shout out. Bye.